Wonders of Light Introduction Light is a form of energy which excites the sensation of vision. Light, like water and air, is essential to sustain life of human beings, animals and plants. Oxygen in the air, so necessary for us to live, is produced by plants in the presence of sunlight. Fuels like coal, natural gas and petroleum are nothing but remains of plants which died millions of years ago and got buried under the earth. In their molecules is locked the energy the plants had received from the sun rays. Sources of light. An object which emits light is called a source of light. The various sources of light can be grouped under two main heads, natural sources of light and man-made or artificial sources of light. Natural sources of light. The sun. It is a very bright source. Even though it is 150 million kilometers away from the earth, it gives sufficient amount of light to make the day bright and warm for us on the earth. The moon. The moon has no light of its own, but reflects the light of the sun. The stars. The stars are rather natural sources of light. Some of them are even brighter than the sun. The glowworm or the firefly, Jugnu. The glowworm or the firefly is another natural source of light. Man-made or artificial sources of light. Some of the man-made sources of light are mentioned below. Candles, oil lamps, earthen lamps, lanterns and gas lamps are man-made sources of light. Electric bulbs and fluorescent tubes at night. The main sources of light is either the electric bulb or the fluorescent tube. Sodium lamps and mercury lamps are used increasingly nowadays and important crossings at the roads. Point sources of light is a source of light which is of the size of a pinhead of a common pin and it's called point sources of light. Extended sources of light any source of light which is bigger than the point sources of light is called extended sources of light. A burning candle, a glowing electric bulb or a fluorescent tube etc. are the examples of extended sources of light. Luminous and non-luminous bodies. Sun, the stars, a candle, an oil lamp etc. give us light. Such bodies which give out light of their own are called luminous bodies. Most of the objects around us do not give out light themselves, but become visible when light from a luminous body falls on them and some part of the reflected light enters into our eyes. Such bodies which do not give out light of their own are called non-luminous bodies. The moon and the planets as non-luminous bodies. Planet Venus appears like a brighter star during early evening. Actually, light does not come from them. The simple reason is that they do not produce light of their own. Instead, they reflect the light from the sun falling on them. Hence, they are non-luminous bodies, transparent, translucent and opaque bodies. Substances which allow light to pass through them easily and through which we can see clearly are called transparent substances. Glass, water, air, cellophane paper are examples of transparent substances. Substances through which light can pass partially but we cannot see through them clearly are called translucent substances. Frosted glass, greased paper, butter paper and wax paper are examples of such substances. Substances which do not allow light to pass through them at all are called opaque substances. Wood, metals, bricks, stones are examples of opaque substances. Rectilinear propagation of light. While seeing a film in a cinema hall, you may have noticed that the light from the projector appears to go in a straight line towards the screen. In a cinema hall, what you see is not light itself, but innumerable dust particles in the path of light, which become visible when light falls on them. The above example shows that light travels in straight lines, this phenomenon is called the rectilinear propagation of light. 
pinhole camera. It consists of a rectangular light proof box with a very small hole in the middle of one face and a shutter arrangement to open and close the hole. A photographic plate is usually placed on the opposite side of the hole. When rays of light coming from an object pass through the fine hole, they form an inverted, small and real image on the screen. The sharpness and size of the image can be altered by adjusting the distance of the object from the hole. On placing a lighted candle in front of the pinhole, we get a clear inverted image of the flame on the screen or the photographic plate. The lighted candle acts as an object as it gives out sufficient amount of light and produces a bright image. The top, A, of the flame sends out rays in all the directions but only a small portion of light rays pass through the pinhole. The rays passing through the pinhole make a small illuminated patch on the screen. A narrow beam from the bottom, B, of the flame also causes an illumination pitch. Similarly, from every point on the object, a narrow beam of light passes through the pinhole and forms a complete image, AB, on the screen. Using the property of similar triangles, we can write as above. Height of the image, I, by height of the object, O, is equal to distance of the image from the pinhole, V, by distance of the object from the pinhole, U, or I by O, is equal to V by U. Light rays. A collection of rays of light is called a beam of light. A beam of light can be parallel, divergent or convergent. Rays of light reaching us from the sun are almost parallel to each other. In a divergent beam, rays of light emerge from a point source and spread away from each other. In a convergent beam, rays come towards a point. Shadows. The space behind the opaque object where the light is wholly or partially cut off by it is called a shadow. Conditions for the formation of a shadow. There must be a source of light. There must be an opaque body to obstruct the path of light. There must be an opaque screen to receive the shadow as it cannot be formed in air. Shadow formed by a point source of light. Cover the front glass of a torch with black tape and make a small hole in the center. This will help you to get a small source or point source of light. Switch on the torch in a dark room and point it towards the wall. Place a ball in front of the torch as shown in figure. You will find the shadow of the ball on the wall. Move the ball towards the torch. The shadow will become bigger. Move it away from the torch. The shadow will become smaller. Two regions of a shadow. Umbra. A region of total darkness is called umbra. No ray of light enters into this region. Penumbra. A region of partial darkness which surrounds the umbra is called penumbra. Some rays of light always reach this region and partially illuminate it. Eclipses. Eclipses are examples of the formation of shadows in nature. The earth goes around the sun and the moon goes around the earth. The sun is larger than the earth and the earth is larger than the moon. The earth and the moon cast their shadows. These shadows form eclipses. There are two types of eclipses, solar eclipse and lunar eclipse. Solar eclipse. Solar eclipse occurs when the moon comes in between the sun and the earth. The shadow of the moon falls on the earth. Some places on the earth are in the umbral region of the shadow and some places are in the penumbral region. People in the umbral region see a total solar eclipse and the people in the penumbral region see a partial solar eclipse. When the distance of the moon from the earth is such that the tip of the umbra fails to reach the earth, as in figure, an annular eclipse occurs and the sun appears as a ring of light. Lunar Eclipse When the Earth comes in between the Sun and the Moon, the shadow of the Earth falls on the Moon and the lunar eclipse occurs. The figure shows different positions of the Moon during the period of eclipse. When the whole of the Moon is in the umbral region, we see total eclipse of the Moon. And when the Moon is partly in the umbral region, 
and partly in the penumbral region of the shadow, we see partial eclipse. However, when the whole of the moon is in the penumbral region of the shadow, the moon is not eclipsed at all.